Hi guys, it's Max. It's 3 in the morning here in London. Uh, it's the 26th of February two s 2010. Um, firstly, a few things uh, I want to say. that I, I want to apologize to you guys for not having put up a video in such a long time. Uh, it's partly due to the fact that I've been quite busy over the past few days and also because there's been uh, not too much to say on the FTSE 100 um, during this time. Until, until I th until we saw some sort of clear action, uh, I didn't think I'd, I'd comment too much or, or, or waste your time with, with needless small details. Uh, also, I want to apologize to uh, two people who left a comment on my last video asking me to explain how I label this complex correction here. Uh, I will make a, a sort of more educational video uh, showing you exactly how to approach labeling uh, all of this. Uh, so from the circled wave one, uh, to what I'm now showing you is a circled wave 2 mess. I will make a separate video which I'll post tonight uh, showing you how to label all of this mess, which will probably be quite a long uh, winded video, but um, if you want to check it out, feel free to do so. Um, quick disclaimer, anything you see in these videos should not be taken as investment or trading advice. Uh, they're purely educational and any talk of trading uh, is purely me expressing my own view about how I may look to approach these markets. Uh, right, moving straight on. If you guys remember, uh, or if you saw my last video, which was posted around the 15th of February, um, basically I was looking for these box targets, which were established about two to three weeks ago, actually. Uh, and I did say that one of these targets uh, would very likely uh, be uh, able to kill the market in its tracks and turn the whole thing around. And I was looking for a wave, circle wave two termination in one of these boxes, and it looks like we got a very nice. Uh, sharp decline out of uh, uh, out of this blue box after we sort of peeked into it uh, and also coincides with a 38.2 percent Fibonacci retracement level. Um, now I'm going to quickly look uh, at, at this detail in, in, in a, a bit later um, in, in a few minutes I'll, I'll look at exactly how the detail works out. Uh, but I do think now that the way circle wave 2 is in and that we will continue the downtrend uh, to below the 5,000 mark and probably a lot lower um, than than that. I should also tell you guys that I am actually short uh, the FTSE 100. Uh, I started building shorts as soon as the market got into sort of 5,300. I wasn't too sure if it was going to terminate here or not. Uh, I managed to extend a little bit further, but, uh, but nonetheless these boxes have worked pretty much perfectly. Uh, I think uh, Elliot Trader Joe calls this a bullseye. Thanks a lot, Joe. I'm not sure if it's luck or coincidence, but uh, surely I'm, 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 well, I'm quite happy with, uh, with that result. Uh, so, yep. So, guys, I'm short this market. Uh, so, <laughs> it's in my best interest to try and keep this commentary as accurate as, as possible. Um, so, I thought I'll show you uh, just, just quickly how these boxes have worked uh, with, with the market action coming up into them. Uh, it's been quite interesting, actually. You can see these previous uh, significant price levels. Um, the market sort of came up here uh, on 17th of February. We kind of bumped up against uh, 53.05, popped uh, under it. Uh, then we kind of been wriggling around, uh, sort of bouncing in between a little bit, uh, in out, in out. Not too much uh, support or resistance anymore. Uh, then we popped on up, um, sort of false poke through the. Uh, 53.75 mark, fell off it again, been moving around a little bit since, and then we kind of just popped into it about 5 pips short of the psychological 5400 mark, and we fell away quite sharply. Uh, then we started to bounce around a little bit. We actually found support on the f sort of 53.05, 5300 area. You can see how that's worked quite nicely. We've, we out of the blue targets straight down, and we find support back into the uh, back in the green box. We've been bouncing around, went a little bit higher, um, got as high as 53.70 today, actually, um, well, yesterday, rather, um, just under this uh, 53.75 previous resistance, and we smashed right through the green box uh, from there. Um, I'll show you exactly how I'm going to label this in a second, but I do think that this top is now in. I do think the circle wave 2 is in, uh, so we'll be going lower. I'm just going to quickly show you guys um, the daily chart of the FTSE 100. And if you see, it looks like this. Uh, we've got the 5400 mark uh, sort of touched here on the 16th of November 2009. Then we had like a messy sideways movement. Uh, then we popped on over, um, came on down, and then popped over again, uh, and 
pretty much five pips short of that 5400 mark, but we started to fall away from it. And arguably, what I think we could be seeing here, if you, if you look at this is the channel of the March rally uh, since 2009, uh, we've actually circled wave one, actually broke out of that, um, but then you know came back in. So we we are looking for another breakout. Uh, but I think what we could see develop here uh, would be some sort of head and shoulders uh, pattern. And if I illustrate it for you, you can you can probably see where I'm going to go with this. Uh, so we've got the left shoulder here, the head, and the right shoulder sort of building up. And then the Elliott Wave expectation is that we will go like this. Uh, we will go lower according to Elliott Wave theory. Uh, so this will look like a very big head and shoulders pattern. Uh, the neckline for this head and shoulders pattern will probably be something like this. Um, so that's pretty much the, neck the neckline. If we break under this red line, uh, the downside target established by the head and shoulders pattern will be around 5400. And the way that is done is by taking uh, the distance from the top of the head uh, to the point of, of, uh, of where the market breaks down and to just move that line uh, pretty much like so. And target is pretty much perfectly 5400. That's a head and shoulders target. Um, it's not a Fibonacci or Elliott wave target. It's, it's just a just standard technical analysis. Uh, so that's one thing you guys want to consider. You should consider on the daily charts for this market. Uh, I'm going to quickly jump into the 15 minute charts. Uh, not this one, just a clear one. And I'll show you, if you remember, here's the circled wave 2, which is the circled wave 2 here. So just keep an eye on the circled wave 2. This is the peak. Uh, 5395, and this is how we fell away. This is the wave structure I'm looking at at the moment. Um, we can see quite a sharp decline. 50, uh, 5395 fell away quite sharply. There's five waves. There is a five wave structure here. Uh, arguably, it could could be here, but doesn't really make too much difference at this point. Um, so we've got a one here, a two, which could be running flat, a sharp three a 4, which doesn't retrace into the price action of 1, and then one final dip to make a 5 move, a 5 wave move off the top. Uh, now this leads me to believe uh, that the peak for wave 2 is in, because we've seen a clear, clearish 5 wave move off the top. Then we see some really messy bouncing around. It's slightly volatile, actually. Um, and I've labeled this as an A, B, and this is a C. Um, this C happened yesterday morning uh, very sharply after this gap down. We closed the gap, uh, rallied on up, and then uh, quickly reversed and pretty much fell off a cliff here. Uh, now what is this? all this action uh, showing us? Well, I actually think that, that uh, we are in the middle of, um, of this degree wave 3. And uh, if, you, if you notice the degree labels I'm using, uh, you'll see that I have these bracketed 1, 2, 3, 4. I don't put the 5s of the season. But I finished them with one degree higher. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, and then you get this one. Uh, so this is the one, this is the two, and I think this is the one of three that we have just seen. Uh, so implication is that there will be a massive, massive decline uh, probably next week, uh, or the beginning of next week will probably begin this massive decline. I'm surely, sh uh, <laughs> I, I stress that it probably will carry on for a whole lot longer afterwards. Um, is, is the Brexit wave one low in? Uh, well, I think so. After FTSE closed, the Dow rallied up quite hard. Um, so I think the FTSE will probably follow to, uh, well, this morning uh, when it opens. I wouldn't be surprised to see the FTSE follow. Uh, what you want to do is you want to establish, pull out some Fibonacci lines, uh, Fibonacci retracements, and look for uh, support resistance in these areas. It's not exactly guaranteed that it will happen to the pip. Uh, but the key thing to take away is that the market should not get above 53.70. If the market gets above 53.70, this count is wrong. Um, it, it's, it's pretty inaccurate. Then, um, pretty much from the, from the point of this one, we can get rid of this A, B, 2, 1. That's definitely going to be incorrect. So if the market gets above 53.70, um, I'll probably be <laughs> look to, 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 to cut m the size of my shorts or stay clear. I do expect a bounce. Uh, but the key is it shouldn't get above 53.70. Um, so I'm expecting something like this. A correction of some sort and then a massive decline. Uh, and then we will see the, the wave 3 uh, develop. Now the reason uh, I think that um, this rally will be corrective um, 
is because having looked at the Dow Jones uh, towards the end of the day, it actually I, it did rally, it did rally towards the end of, uh, of Thursday uh, of yesterday, and it rallied quite a lot actually. Uh, it's quite worrying. So I'm it's been it's thrown me off a bit, but I'll show you what I think of it. I don't usually take a look at American markets, uh, but I'm trying to make some sense of it all. And uh, if I just bring up a chart of the Dow Jones, um, here is pretty much the peak, February 19th, uh, same time, f one, the one day before the FTSE, FTSE peaked on the 22nd, 23rd actually, so one or two days before the FTSE, February 19th, this is the Dow peak, and this is how we've fallen away. Now I can see five wave structures, um, but you can see a lot of overlaps, and the one and the four that I've got labeled here clearly overlap. Uh, but the reason I think that the Dow peak is actually in, and that this rally that we saw towards the end of the day is actually uh, going to be corrective, is the following. Uh, now it's not obvious at first uh, to the untrained eye, but if you pull out some uh, trend lines like so, uh, you will find that the Dow is in fact making an expanding wedge. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. I hope that's clear. Uh, now, in Elliott wave terms, it's sort of a, a expanding diagonal. Um, I know in sort of classical technical analysis, some people refer to it as a microphone because it's sort of um, increasing. Think think of it as like increasing sound waves or increasing volume uh, as you move to the right. Uh, so volatility or, or, or the moves are getting bigger. So I can kind of see where they, they're coming from with the microphone idea. Um, so this in mind, I'll show you quickly what it looks like in an Elliott wave format. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. Now I'm putting it. You can see that my expanding uh, wedge is not in uh, the five, but in fact in the one. It's 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 the beginning of an impulsive move here. It's the end of an impulsive move. So there's a slight difference between this diagram and the one and what you can see on my charts, but this is basically the idea. And it's basically, you can see the one and four clearly over overlap in an expanding type triangle slash wedge. Um, so that's what I'm looking at uh, as a potential pattern. Uh, one thing to note, that here from this five low, uh, there is a five wave rally. And if I just get my uh, drawing tool, you'll see this is a one, this is a two, this is a three, there's a bit of a triangle here, and this is the final five. Uh, is the five over? No way of telling yet if the five is over, uh, but the point is there is a five uh, wave move. Um, so how to interpret this? Well, uh, one, two, three, four, five, down to this five, if I bring out the drawing kit, uh, I think it will be pretty safe to say that we have some sort of um, Wave one. Now, probably I'm probably using different labels to, to what I just showed you on the footsie, but um, try and not not look at that as being too too relevant at this point. Uh, so five waves down. Arguably, this is a one, uh, which is an expanding triangle. Now we've got five waves up. Uh, so what I expect the Dow to do is that these five waves up, it'll be some sort of A. Uh, then I want to see a correction for B, and then one more poke up for C to make a bracket to two. And they might find resistance on the upper end of this uh, of this wedge. Uh, it's not guaranteed, of course, uh, but it's just an idea at, uh, at this point. Uh, another thing you can do is, in fact, get some Fibonacci retracement levels from this low to the previous peak, and uh, try and work out uh, where this could go. Perhaps even as high as a 23.6% retracement, um, somewhere in this sort of area. But only time will tell. So the expectation is that we will see some sort of decline, one more bounce up. Uh, and then a crash. But the key for the Dow is that we won't go above 10,435. I'm just going to round it down by two pips. But 10,435 should not be exceeded. Uh, so from this video, what's, uh, what's key to take away? Well, I'm trying to make some sense of it, uh, of, of these patterns, but I think that the peaks for both the Dow and the FTSE are in. The key levels that both markets should not exceed is 10,435 for the Dow and for the FTSE um, 5,370. That's pretty much it for this video guys. Uh, I'm going to do a few more uh, in a second and uh, it's pretty much just going to be an educational video showing you how to label all of this mess. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing how I would approach labeling all of this uh, it's pretty complicated stuff, but um, again, if you're interested, uh, feel free to take a look at that video and um, 
and leave me a few comments on, on what you think of my technique. It's not easy stuff, but the more you do it, you know, practice makes perfect. Um, last thing, uh, in my comments uh, in this in this video comment box, I'm going to give you three links. Um, the third, uh, the first link uh, will probably be to my last video uh, where I was showing you these uh, these box targets. I'm actually quite proud of the fact that these targets seem to have worked so nicely. So I'm going to try and milk it a little bit. Um, my second link is going to be to uh, Elliot Trader Joe's um, YouTube site or YouTube uh, page. Uh, please feel free, feel free to subscribe to his uh, video channel. He mainly uh, covers American markets, um, or rather he, he covers American markets far more frequently than I do. Uh, so if you follow those, uh, I, I strongly recommend you subscribe to Joe's channel. Uh, and the last link is to John Piper's Trading, uh, which is a subscription service of which I am a member, and uh, I recommend for anyone who's uh, who's interested in a more professional uh, service at uh, sort of market analysis. Okay, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Again, any questions, comments, and uh, and ratings are always welcome. Um, Thanks a lot. Happy trading for uh, well, market opens in about five five hours, just under five hours. Uh, so happy trading, and I uh, hope this has helped.